meeting is being recorded. All right. Well, again, welcome. Uh, we have a pretty short agenda today, last meeting of the year, kind of a recap. Um, maybe just scroll down just a little bit. Um, just uh, we're going to talk about some transition internally and and then kind of terms of the members and an update on that. And then uh, reviewing our charter update and just a summary of, you know, summer report of what we've done and, and then looking at next year's calendar, talking about, you know, brainstorming some ideas and then um, talking about locations. So I will maybe at this point, I guess we can start with the first topic, which is uh, Cooper is leaving us at the end of the year. So this is going to be his last meeting and I wanna thank him for all of his great work and leadership and creative ideas. I think he's really helped us become a better committee and I think more effective for the organization. So uh, thank you, Cooper, very much. Um, I'm going to turn it back to you and you can talk about kind of the transition and next steps from, from that perspective. Sounds great. <clears throat> thank you, Commissioner. Good to see everybody and thank you for your kind words. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with this group, as I mentioned last time. And Excited to see where y'all go from here. Uh, but the one thing we did want to mention today is um, there is not, excuse me, there's not been a replacement um, as of yet for me selected. That recruitment is ongoing. I anticipate it'll probably go into the spring, to be quite honest. Um, uh, and so in the interim, uh, I have asked and, uh, and Commissioner Smith, uh, I think, agrees that um, Carolyn Sullivan will. Uh, be the executive sponsor and serve in that role uh, over the interim period um, and really help uh, the commissioner and the team um, get the agendas ready and uh, and be a, a liaison. Uh, if you all need uh, that executive level kind of liaison with the agency, please feel free to reach out to Carolyn. Carolyn, thank you for stepping into that role. Uh, I think given Carolyn's uh, scope of responsibilities across the agency, uh, it makes sense for her to step into that role because she really does have all of the things that we talk about in this agency. She has some touch point or her team does uh, with all of that work. Um, and having already served on the commission for, or sorry, on the committee for a while, um, you know, she's well familiar with what y'all are doing. So uh, Carolyn, thank you. Uh, and if anybody has any questions, I think Carolyn and I are happy to answer them, but otherwise that was really it for the, for that piece of it, commissioner. Great, thanks. And welcome, Carolyn. I appreciate your stepping in. And I, my final comment to Cooper is it's taking so long to replace you because you're not replaceable. That's right. Um, and Carolyn, do you want to just say a couple words about the committee? And yeah, to just uh, so I'm looking forward to this opportunity. Um, I've been with ODOT now for about six months. So I've been able to get, get really um, well-informed on many different aspects of the agency. Just for those of you who haven't met me personally or, or just as a refresher as well, uh, I am the Chief Administrative Officer of ODOT and I have uh, the Support Service Division uh, within my body of work uh, that consists of procurement, human resources, information services, data solutions, uh, I'm gonna forget some, uh, the Office of Organizational Excellence, the uh, Office of Employee Safety and Facilities. Uh, so it's a lot of very disparate groups, but at the same time, they work very closely to make sure that we are operating as efficiently as possible as an agency from a behind the scenes kind of perspective. Great, Th thank you very much, Carolyn. Appreciate the, uh, the refresher for everybody. And uh, so we'll move on to the member terms and recruitment. And I think this was, uh, it has Cooper is, is leading it, but maybe we can tag team it a little bit. Um, you may have had a chance to look at the materials that got sent out that we are uh, doing some charter update, which we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that next. But one of the pieces that we're gonna um, be proposing to change, it'll go to the OTC for 
approval um, is uh, the terms and uh, transitioning in the, in the membership because right you know historically we've had a limit on terms two two year terms and then the COVID hit and you know things got a little derailed and right now um, what we'd like to do is transition to having staggered terms so that we have a better cadence on turnover. And we're going to be doing away with the mandatory two-term two limit. So um, I've asked both Ted and Paula if they would be willing to continue and do another two-year term, and they both have agreed. So pending OTC final approval, um, they will continue. And also uh, we are, we did get confirmation um, that uh, we are losing one member and maybe I'll just turn that over to Cooper to talk about briefly. Sure, sure. Uh, thanks Commissioner. Yes, uh, so um, I know we've all gotten to know Mike Jordan and enjoyed his participation in this group uh, over the last uh, year and a half, two years. Um, but I think for those of you who aren't tracking, Mike has been, um, asked by the mayor of Portland to step into the COO role, basically um, really the administrator, city administrator, uh, as I understand it, kind of role for, for Portland, which is a huge job. And he's been in that role for a while. Uh, we're also, the city's undergoing a, a change in government uh, where that's going to be a, a more permanent position. I have no idea, you know, whether, whether Mike's going to put his name in the hat for that long term, but for now he's in that role and that's consuming all of his time. Uh, and so uh, we reached out to him and got a hold of him a few weeks ago, and uh, he confirmed that he just doesn't, uh, as much as he'd like to have the bandwidth to uh, continue participating with the committee. And we, of course, thanked him for his service, and uh, and I know we'll miss having his valuable perspective, but um, uh, but that's where that is. Thanks, Cooper. And so we're going to be, you know, actively recruiting um, to, to fill that position, and I think Carolyn is going to assist me with that. and. I would just throw it out to the members that if if you uh, have some ideas of people that you think might be a good addition, just let me know and and uh, we can add add names to the list and and find a good a good fit to work with our group. Can I can I ask a quick question? Oh, sorry, Paula, you go first. You had your hand oh. up. <laughs> no, that's fine. I was just curious about whether you're looking for a certain kind of skill set or spot. Is there a gap work? trying to fill on the committee. I mean, you know, Mike's um, perspective was great from a local yeah. agency and his great urban planning coordination role. But I wonder, is that an agency person you're looking for or somebody else? That's a really good question. Um, maybe can we switch and, and bring up the committee member um, memo? Because I think that lays out sort of the roles that people are filling. Have to give me just a minute. Um, I didn't get that one in the uh, materials. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, for what it for what it's worth, uh, Commissioner Smith, I'll just jump in the charter. Yeah, please I do. Had it open in front of me here too. Um, oh, good. And I think, Paula, to your question, uh, that role Mike had been in was an external stakeholder with a, with a, I guess, an emphasis on performance was the term. And so Organ organization performance. Yeah. yeah. So. And I believe if, just to add, just to, add it, to that, um, you know, recalling the initial conversations, I think we'd, we'd identified Mike. Uh, not only because of his his um, perspective, you know, working and leading a bureau within the city, but also as his his perspective as the former DAS director, um, really had a deep kind of enterprise state government perspective for Oregon and understood the inner workings of of that machinery, if you will. Um, and so, from the organizational performance perspective, that was really kind of the the piece, at least to my mind, that um, that. Uh, you know, he he brought to the conversation. So it might be some value to, to look for someone along with the similar background. Um, thank you, Sabrina. Um, maybe we can just take that down for now. We can look at each other and talk. <laughs> um, and uh, Shauna, you had a question? Uh, Paula asked my question. Anyway, so if you think of Think of people and and you know give it some thought and then and then let me know if you have any ideas. 
Um, I have another question though. I just remembered. Sure. Sorry. Um, and I apologize for my voice. I have, my whole house has been sick for the last two months. It's terrible. Um, uh, it's so bad. Um, I just want to sort of flag that, you know, anytime, um, a member rolls off, we have an opportunity to kind of think through from a DEI perspective who we're missing. And I want to add to the DEI perspective, geographic diversity as well, since we do represent the whole state. So um, just a flag that I think we should be thinking about uh, those two things as well. Yes, good input. I appreciate it. Although I do add some geographic diversity. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, uh, so charter update, we touched on a couple of the um, things, kind of changing up the committee term, um, and maybe we could, let's see, bring up, I'm putting you on the spot today, Sabrina, sorry. Uh, can you bring up the charter red line? And if not, I can just do a quick summary. I think we're, we're not necessarily asking you to wordsmith it, um, but just any kind of input or thoughts you might have. One of the things we're doing is um, we no longer do the audit committee. That role has been transferred to the OTC. Um, we wanted to add our goals being to adding that we're also trying to meet ODOT's strategic action plan, embed that into our chart. Um, we are changing the requirement that there be a chair and a co-chair just because we don't, we're sort of low on OTC members and we don't really have enough to have both. So this gives us the opportunity to just have one chair if we can't have a vice chair. And I see Paula's hand up, so I am gonna turn it to you. It, it's a question about the auditing, and I remember from the early days of the committee um, working with the internal auditor on their audit plan, and I think it's totally appropriate that we shouldn't be involved in the internal audit work. I mean, it just feels like that's the commission thing, but where we're working on things that might support the continuous improvement of ODOT's performance if there are performance audits done or performance reporting done, I think it would be really helpful at least that we see those um, as a follow-up or you know, have an opportunity to kind of see that feedback circle on performance. Yeah, I agree. I think that's a good suggestion. And, and there isn't any reason why we can't have the performance audits summaries included in our materials because it may also give us um, an opportunity to identify some new areas that we might want to add to our uh, review. Mm -hmm. And I think we do the KPM annual performance re review. So mm -hmm. that, that gets a little bit at that. Um, so yeah, I think that's a good. See. The uh, other thing that we're going to be doing is changing up the term limits on the committee members. We talked about that. And adding the requirement for our performance report on projects over $50 million as part of our body of work. So those are the highlights of what we're changing and this will go to the OTC for their approval. Um, just wanted to highlight it for you today and give people an opportunity to make any comments. That they need. All right. So the 
the 2022 summary report, I think, is it, Cooper, is this something that you were going to cover? Uh, I wasn't planning on it. Uh, okay. I might have it to uh, Victoria. Uh, okay. Maybe, but Victoria, since you've been closest to it, it might be, if that's all right with you, Commissioner, best yes. for her to just quickly walk through. Okay, so um, this is just a summary of the year of the, the meetings, our meeting schedules. There are links to the videos that are on the ODOT YouTube channel for, uh, for viewing. The only one we are missing is the one from February uh, where there was some, um, some technical issues that did not uh, allow that to occur. Here are the summary of the key recommendations and the things that we have heard from the committee that tend to cross across topics for the whole agency to, to just keep in mind as they are working through their continu internal continuous improvement efforts. It is just increasing partnerships, uh, using data effectively, taking a systems view at how performance and our processes are linked together, being creative in our solutions, making sure that we're thinking out of the box, but at the same time staying focused and looking for opportunities where you can get more, uh, more benefit from, from a project rather than spreading ourselves too thin. We also included a, uh, an org chart that shows the relative position of the CIAC to the rest of the organization and um, the, different, the different groups uh, with, within here. Those reorgs, of course, are, are continuing to be ongoing as we apply continuous improvement to our own structure. So you will see changes in there as we go along. Um, the majority of the rest of the report is just summaries of, um, of the things that were covered, who were, who were our um, discussion leaders, what topics did we have, what did we discuss, and uh, what are the outcomes. A couple I highlighted, you'll see here on this page coming up in blue, where there were some specific um, ideas that came out uh, in, in that February meeting. For example, in working with the um, feds to fund development of contractor capabilities is something that Ted had recommended back in February um, and partnering with AGC to help reduce uh, costs um, and looking for contractors to help develop ways to incentivize climate and social equity solutions. The big push for feedback I will be doing will be later in the year, just before we do the biennial performance report, where I'll be looking back for sp looking back to uh, to the committee and to the discussion leaders for specific examples of improvements to organization, the recommendations that the committee made, and and the improvements that the agency realized as a result of that. I do want to just mention in general that even when we've had a meeting that's had to be canceled, and of course a lot of work goes into preparing for those meetings, that even when that has happened, the uh, division leaders and the uh, discussion leaders are saying that that was time well spent to get focused and working on that. So even if you only see their materials um, in written format and we don't have a discussion, they are finding this process, the agency is finding this process useful and helpful to them. And we hope that you are as well. Um, okay, so we just kind of, we can just scroll through those all pretty pretty quick. That's just all details of all the different all the different months, and then towards the end, there's just a just kind of going back and trying to to pick up you know when we're in a, um, kind of kind of attendance at the different ones, um, summarizing the meetings again, just again, just trying to put just trying to put a bow around ourselves. We've had some turnover on the organization at the highest levers, levels with um, Carolyn uh, stepping into that, that interim executive sponsor role and new positions on the committee. And it's just seemed like this level of information might be useful. So looking for, looking for any feedback that would uh, make this even more useful to you or to the agency. Thanks, Victoria. Uh, any Let's take that down and, and see if anybody has any thoughts they want to share or, excuse me, um, any other feedback on what might make this report more useful. Because I think we're going to use this also for future reporting back to the commission and, and, um, and the legislatures. Um, so uh, I'm kind of a firm believer in reporting out kind of the future you want to see. And what I mean by that is, for example, I really want to see ODOT become 
a policy leader in the state around um, vehicle electrification, climate change, um, things like that, that historically were not in its purview. And I and, and what I see in the state is like a, a sort of a who's on first type approach to convening those conversations. I'd love to see ODOT step into that role as convener and setting the table and taking the lead and not stepping on anyone's toes. I'm not saying like step on DEQ's toes or uh, ODOT's toes or uh, ODO's toes, but like driving the conversation a bit more. And so in that regard, I think stating that as a report out um, along the climate and you know EV conversations that and you know throw it in my court say Shauna Brownstein thinks we need to do this like I'm happy to defend that position but really presenting that to the OTC if other folks agree <laughs> obviously this isn't a dictatorship but like um, that that is the framework that I think about sort of report outs. Almost putting a stake in the ground. I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think and we have to be a little careful not to get into politics, though, to where all of a sudden we're into a political thing, one side against the other. Uh, I agree with you. I think it's great to move forward, but I think you have to walk on eggshells a little bit. Yeah, I uh, I'm like a bull in a china shop. Like, <laughs> let, like I'll claim ignorance on the politics. Like, somebody needs to drive the conversations, and I think it should be ODOT. And ODOT has been tasked with it, and so I want to em embolden the agency to like grab the reins and run with it. Amber, now, is that? Oh, go ahead. <clears throat> I'll, I'll put my hand up. Yeah, I just want to follow up on. Um, what was just said, and I, I, um, I completely agree. Um, the thing that I have seen, and I've talked to other local agencies about this, and ODOT is one of the largest funders around capital investment, in which case it would be extremely helpful if ODOT saw themselves as a convener and I agree with Shauna on as a convener around certain types of policy matters like climate and equity and, and capital. And the problem that I continue to see is that agencies think that they have to stay in their little bitty role. But the thing is, is they, ODOT can use its role both as an investor, but as a partner to leverage funds for other types of investments. That's what they do all the time. They just don't see themselves <coughs> that way. So I agree that, um, but, to, but to Ted's point around the political issues, that requires that um, the convener understand how to bring the partners together in a way so as to to help navigate and assist oh. the various partners to work on the politics together. Paula? I think we're all saying similar things, um, but I'll, I'll give you Washington's experience just around the EV and NEVI um, pursuit. WashDOT had uh, an office um, for electric vehicle charging, had worked with Oregon for the whole electric highway, electric West Coast, whatever it was called, the agreement between the governors years ago. Um, and we had um, a legislature who, or maybe it was the governor, current governor, who decided that Department of Commerce for Washington should be in charge of that energy transition at large um, and just assumed the EV or wanted to assume the ownership of EV charging. Um, and WashDOT had to push back a bit. And now there's a joint task force that has Department of Commerce and WashDOT at the chair, co chair yeah. level involving other agencies like Department of Ecology and all of those. So I think the point is good where ODOT has 
ownership, responsibility, um, and nexus to USDOT and those kinds of funds. I think having a leadership role or at least finding those other state agency partners that you can create something before it gets created for you. Um, because I think now they're all struggling on who's in charge and who gets to do what. And it, and it wasn't a collaborative setup. Or it was sort of forced on them. And I don't think it's as cooperative as it could have been had WashDOT initiated it um, with the others. I might um, put Amanda on the spot. Oh, she even raised her hand. Good. Because uh, I know that we've done um, some outreach and, and I know that the OTC has really emphasized uh -huh. the need to um, put more effort and money into EV charging and we've committed funds to that effort. It's, so maybe Amanda, can you tell us what to date we have done? Any thoughts on, on how we might implement this, some of these ideas? Yeah, so um, I think Shauna's point is um, taken really well in that there's a lot of players in the uh, transportation electrification space. Um, so I would say, namely among state agencies alone, it's the Public Utility Commission, Department of Environmental Quality, Department of Energy, and us. We are like the four big agencies um, in this space. Uh, working with Governor Brown because of that kind of cluster, uh, we had her clarify that ODOT plays a re lead role in that. Um, now, to the point of uh, language being tricky and people worrying about turf, we really reframe that exactly to Shauna's language, which is a convener. We are the convener across state agencies um, and with the uh, utilities and private sector in starting conversations on electrification. So we've tried to really solidify that role across agencies um, and develop a lot of key partnerships. Um, we work a ton with uh, the new Joint Office on Energy and Transportation. In fact, they know my staff now by name. I run into them, they're like, hey, Mary Brazel, she's great. <laughs> uh, they'll talk about her a lot. But uh, I think where the opportunity lies, Commissioner Smith, is um, sharing a little bit more about some of the ways in which we're coordinating and collaborating, because I think from a kind of operational perspective, how do we do the convening? Um, how do we make sure that we're coordinated and aligned and we understand our pieces and that we're leveraging things in the right way? So with so many players in the space, what are we doing to coordinate and collaborate and lead in this? Um, so I'd love to come back at some point and share a little bit more about how we're doing that and then get some input from folks here on this call and uh, new people that join to hear, uh, to get their perspectives on how else maybe who we're missing from that conversation or how else we could form part of that conversation. Uh, that's great. And, I, and actually it's a perfect segue into our, in our next topic, which is next year and what do we wanna talk about? Um, so maybe I could have uh, Sabrina bring up next year's uh, calendar and suggested topics and we can refine and brainstorm other things that we wanna I just want to, Amanda, thanks for sharing that. And I know you guys have been doing a really good job in that space and it is a really crowded space and it is a really turfy space. So um, thank you for sharing that. I, I'm excited to hear more. Yeah, I know, I know we have um, EV and climate back on our tentative agenda for next year. So maybe we could add kind of the topic of ODOT as convener. I um, separate a separate document. Yeah, Sabrina, sorry. I, I really like that idea because I can see ODOT occupying the space beyond just you know um, transportation electrification. Like I can see um, the agency convening dialogues across state agencies around diversification of workforce. Um, uh, or workforce training, construction. I mean, there's so many construction agencies at the state. And so like I, and I think that the language of convener is really safe language um, so that other folks don't feel like you're stepping on their toes. Um, but I really wanna see the agency kind of embody that role, that leadership role. Um, 
And uh, I think that there's lots of opportunity to do that. All right, so maybe it, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, if I may, um, I just think that's, that's a super important point. Um, also with our local jurisdiction partners, and as we get close to, we're in the midst of updating the Oregon Transportation Plan. But I think part of the success of that um, long term should be having a shared vision across um, all entities that serve transportation and serve the people of Oregon and connecting them. Um, and I think figuring out ways that we can lead in that space to have that shared objective uh, that we mutually work towards. Yes, um, and, and it almost sounds to me that you know ODOT as convener is bigger than just under the climate EV topic. So, so maybe we could add a ODOT as con convener um, discussion, both cross agencies and you know at the state level, and also local agencies, and brainstorm you know, hear from ODOT what we've been doing and brainstorm, you know, what else we could be doing, how we might um, reach out to partners and and it could be a, a pretty full discussion. Mac? Yeah, I'm, I'm channeling uh, a little bit of Michael Jordan in this conversation I'm listening to. I, we were at a meet, we were at a CIC meeting a couple months ago, maybe the two meetings ago where Michael specifically talked about the role of ODOT as a convener, right? I think he was coming at it from like land use and economic development, um, I think was his example at the time. What I might suggest, uh, if it's okay, Commissioner, I think the ODOT team, Carolyn, Amanda, myself, we could probably spend a little bit of time kind of scoping that out um, as we get it on the agenda here, but scoping it out. And I think to Amber and Shauna's points both and Paula's as well, great to be a convener, but for what goal? Like, what's the outcome? I, I think, Amber, maybe that's where you're driving towards. I, I think we can do some staff work to help kind of scope that out because I think that'll help uh, make sure we're using our time wisely and value value add for this group. Just a suggestion. No, that's a great idea. I like that. Um, and I would also say, you know, Shauna and, and, and uh, Amber, if you have any further thoughts on it, you know, feel free to email or reach out to uh, any of the ODOT folks with your ideas as they develop that. Um, I don't know that we necessarily need to find a specific spot for it next year. This is really a draft agenda or draft uh, calendar for the year. I think we might see some things change as 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 different priorities come up, but. I think a placeholder, we need to, to add that as another topic. So we thought we would do a similar calendar to this year, which is not every month, which sometimes feels a little rushed for people um, and keep our Zoom format for most of the year but throw out the opportunity to have a few in-person meetings. And I think um, this, uh, this one doesn't have the asterisks. Do you have the other calendar that, that is just a standalone for next year? Sorry. This is all um, I have, Sharon. I, oh, if there's okay. another one, I don't know where it's at. Hmm. It's the only, there's just the year-end summary. This is the only one that I have for 2023. Okay. Sabrina, I was going to note that that's different than a printout of one that you'd sent me earlier. The one that you'd sent me earlier actually looks a little bit more built out than the one you just put up on screen. So I don't know if maybe some items were deleted. Hmm, interesting. I didn't send one out, so I'm not sure. Hey, Victoria, did you? Yes, I, I sent that out. Uh, yeah, let me, would you like me to go ahead and-, and Yeah, uh, can you share that? Yeah, let me see if I can do that for us. 
It must have be one be one that Victoria sent out. I've got too many to go through here. Yeah. Can you make it bigger? Yeah. That's the one I just shared. The one before didn't have a March. Right. Maybe um a little smaller, it's not quite fitting there. I don't want to make you too sick here. So it's okay. It's good. How's that? So yes. March. Um, I think you might have had an earlier draft. I'm sorry, Sabrina. Um, I may I had to make a couple of changes for my schedule. So we thought we'd take a break in January and then in February bring back major projects, cost and estimating an annual update. Um, in March, have the equity and civil rights office update and the data office update, following up on our more recent one, people wanting to have another follow-up. Um, do a break in April and then have climate and EV come back. And at that point, we should have the EV charging station contract awarded, so a better sense of timing of rollout. Um, and in bold, we've got the major projects, $50 million um, requiring CIC review. This is a legislative legislature requirement for our committee. Um, and that one in June, I put it, we put an asterisk here thinking that maybe if people wanted to have an in-person meeting, that might be a good meeting to do in person. Um, have a break. And then in August, a couple of other required topics, KPM review, CIAC progress report, and then you know, rolling that in with the strategic action plan update, sort of all of our performance oh. and, and reporting requirements also maybe have that one be an in-person meeting. Take a break in September because we've got the tri-state meeting for the OTC, which is takes up an, a lot of time. Um, and, and then one of my thoughts to add to our body of work might be uh, a review of DMV continuous improvements. And that's an area of the agency that I think has had some struggles through the pandemic that, that maybe we could have this committee you know, look at with a different lens. Um, and, then, and then we have a, and maybe do that one in person as well. And then have, we have an open topic in November in case we wanna add some things there. Um, so that was our thought on next year, but, We'd like to brainstorm any other topics people would like to see and make sure these dates work for folks and then also talk about, do we wanna have some in-person meetings? So let's open it up and stop sharing the screen and we can talk about all of those things. And have a free for all, so jump in. <laughs> Um, so one of the things I was thinking about just in terms of framing each topic is I, I really want to know kind of what the progress has been and where the agency has had wins. And so, for example, on the DMV side of things, like, I think the agency pivoted really quickly to creating, uh, during the pandemic, to creating, like, appointments. And, you know, I, you know, those are the sorts of things that, you know, I think are really important for us to know and to celebrate. Um, uh, right. So I don't want those things to be discounted. You guys are sort of thinking about this stuff all day, every day, but you know, this committee, or at least I am not. And um, I really want the agency to get better at sort of celebrating its wins. Um, so again, just back to the, re the framing of kind of where we've been, how far we've come, what are our next things that we're gonna do? What progress do we wanna see moving forward in terms of like the different topics that we're gonna discuss would be helpful for me. Yeah, I like that suggestion. Carolyn and then Amber. 
Sorry, I lost my mouse. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, my portfolio of work is quite broad and extensive and encompasses around 400 people and many, many internal processes. I don't know if it's outside the scope of this body to uh, maybe listen to or offer feedback on the internal interworkings of ODOT and how that might uh, contribute to some improvements. So if there's interest, uh, I'd be happy to present at one of these um, discussions. Yeah, I think um, what we can take a look at that and maybe have some discussion offline as we build some additional topics, much to Max um, suggestion on the um, convener issue. So yes, let's put that on the list. I think developing a list of additional topics um, is, is great because we might wanna pivot during the year if, if some of the other topics don't seem as relevant. Having a list that this whole committee is interested in is, I think is a good idea. Take Amber, then Mac, then Ted. I think Amber, you might be frozen. Well, let's hopefully she can unfreeze. And in the meantime, maybe Mac, do you want to go? Yeah, just just flag for I think this group's awareness. Uh, I think the second half of the year, uh, we could probably talk offline about uh, possibly talking about the impacts of the agency's budget reduction, specifically maintenance and operations or internal operations that Carolyn just referenced in DMV services. Um, I think. I think that needs to be a after July conversation, depending on what goes on with the legislature. But when I think about efficiencies, that's obviously the first place that comes up is, is government being more, you know, more efficient or as efficient as they can? And then how do we balance that with making some pretty dramatic cuts to the services that we provide? I think this group would probably be interested in that. Um, so just flag, I think it could potentially be a topic for the second half of the year. That sounds good. Uh, Amber, are you back? Yeah, sorry about that. All right. Um, my thing booted me. Um, so I just wanted to follow up on what Shauna said because I completely agree with her. And so I'm not going to quite get the topic right, but I'm sure Mac and Cooper and the rest can help reframe this in a better way. But <clears throat> so one thing that I would really like ODOT to focus on is its marketing approach. ODOT does good things. The thing, the one good thing that I would say I really want ODOT to work on is talking about itself. Yeah. And so I guess I would ask if we can have, I really believe at least two meetings talking about that topic and everything from what are what is the marketing strategy? Um, how what are the successes that you are uh, using in your marketing strategies? Who are the target audiences? And the other thing is, I just want to really encourage that we pull out detail related to engaging equity communities and what is the proportion of dollars spent to target those audiences because you know the the consciousness around the state is is everyone and it includes equity and so dollars speak about your priorities so anyways that's just an idea because you all are doing great things and sometimes it's hard for all of us to talk about ourselves about the great things we're doing yeah Good suggestion, Amber. I like that. I'd like to give a shout out to whoever runs your social media. I think they're great. I follow you guys on Instagram and they're doing a great job. That's great. Uh, Ted, then Paula. Yeah, I think we're all kind of going in the same direction on the DBE when we get into that. 
Um, I mentor a number of DBs and I'm at the different associations and mingling with them. And we've got a lot of very successful minority contractors that are out working every day. And it'd be great to be able to show some of that if we could get a list of the contractors working for us, where they are, how they're doing. Most of them started with a pickup truck and a wheelbarrow and they're doing very well. So uh, I think bragging about what ODOT has done and the programs and the people they've really uh, helped would be great to see. And then when we get into the construction major projects, I'd sure love to see schedule, see change orders, see design changes, uh, many of the things that really drive the projects. Where are they? Rather than just cost or we're overrunning, underrunning, there's the reasons why we do that. And if we could get into some of those, I think it'd paint a, a picture for us. I'd love to see, you know, where we're at on them. That's it. Great, good, good input. <clears throat> I think it's you, Paula. Okay, um, Mac mentioned uh, some expected budget cuts and that maybe at, after July when the legislature has made decisions, um, we could talk more about that. I'm curious, Will the legislature likely just give you levels of cuts and then that's up to the agency and commission to determine how to parse that out? And the reason I'm asking is how will budget cuts and the decision making around that um, fit with the desire for more equitable decisions and investments, resilience, um, all kinds of things that kind of roll out of slash and burn budget cuts that legislators tend to do. And and I wonder, maybe it's not our role to sort that out, but I'm, I'm curious to understand what you're going to be left with in July and whether there's a strategy that you're using on the marketing concept, as Amber said, uh, to talk about the good results you're getting in these areas and the value of those. Yeah, Paul, a great comment. And Sorry to give it short shrift a minute ago. Um, and others from ODOT team jump in here. Um, we often talk about it in kind of two budget perspectives. I'll do this quickly, but um, federal programs. So a lot of what we talk about around like DB community, what we can do for workforce, the electrification, those are all federally funded programs, right? So we're, I carefully say this, we're rich on the project and program side. We're not rich, right? We've got quite a bit of federal dollars to play with. Our budget challenges on the state highway fund side, yeah. which funds maintenance and operations and the services that we provide. And so, Paula, I think you're, you're spot on in terms of like the, the outcomes we want, the strategic yeah. action plan. This is one of the main three pillars of that strategic action plan is the modern transportation system, which needs to have a sustainable funding source. And so the conversation we've been teeing up is, with the legislature is we have a problem meaning we have an imbalance of the way our funding is structured for all good reasons, but mm -hmm. the model isn't working. And here's the impact uh, of the cuts we're going to have to make as we look forward. Here's the types of reductions we're going to have to make if there's not a foundational change made. The commission certainly is aware of that, involved in it, um, but not uh, the leg we're not asking the legislature you know, to go approve a bunch of funding wide open and give it to, to the commission or to the agency to manage, right? But how do we do it in a way that says, here's the types of things that we're going to not have to cut as a result. So I, I don't know if I'm helping, but that's a bit of the awkward place we're in over the next six months is trying to move interstate bridge, trying to move a road usage charge and bring awareness to what's going on with our service level reductions. At the same time, we're trying to you know, be aggressive and move other big things forward, like electrification and big projects. And operations and not have your roads fall apart. Yeah. yeah. But others, please jump in. Go ahead, Cooper. Uh, yeah, I was just going to add on. I think, um, Paula, you, it's a great question. And Matt captured it well. I guess I might just uh, put a, a bit of a finer point on 
some of where we are with the legislator, legislative uh, conversations this go around. I mean, we really are, um, as, as Mac mentioned, what we're trying to do now is frame up just how dire the situation is. Looking at our financial forecast, we're, we're hundreds of millions of dollars in the hole, likely, um, given um, the decline in gas tax revenue over the next few years. So we are going to have to make uh, roughly 10% budget cut to that operation side um, across the agency. And where we do that, we're trying to be really intentional. Um, and not, you know, not just say it's a blanket cut for every division you're going to take, but be, be more strategic. And so that's what all the teams are kind of doing right now, really with an eye toward, as Max said, being able to define with 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 a great deal of clarity. These are the things that we cannot continue to do. And it goes down to the, the level of service that we can't provide on low volume roads. Um, now around the state, we're not going to be able to plow them at all or whatever the case may be, right? And, and be able to really be definitive with that in order to, frankly, sway the legislature to understand how serious this is um, and potentially pony up uh, some, some funds and help us get out of the hole. That's the hope. Um, we think it's probably going to be, you know, multi-session conversation with them, and we're really um, kind of starting it now. And so I think to Max's point, maybe we get a little bit of support um, after this session, but I think we're pretty clear-eyed that it's going to be probably multiple sessions, um, and really the, the fiscal cliff is a few biennia out, and so we have some time to do that, but we need to start that conversation now, and we need to be really clear and definitive about what we can no longer continue to do. And I'd say, frankly, as an agency, we've, um, it's a hard thing to do, as you well know, um, we've, we've nibbled around the edges at times, but making big programmatic cuts um, or big levels of service cuts, uh, that's a whole nother conversation entirely. And that's kind of where we are. At the same time, then being able to balance that with all these other priorities that we're doing new and differently and better and leaning in in different ways to climate, to equity, that's, that is the struggle that we're facing. Um, and I think it's a really good thing for y'all to be aware of, and, and at least as context, if not talking specifically about it uh, in this committee moving forward, I think it's a really great thing for y'all to be be thinking about. Yeah, thanks. Um, those are that's good suggestions, and I think we're compiling a list of topics and, and expansions on some of the basic topics on how we want to approach them. Uh, what do people think about having two or three in-person meetings, probably in the Salem area. Um, would your schedules allow that? I think it would be great. I like the flexibility of the hybrid. Um, I, I still travel quite a bit across the country, but as I just looked ahead on my calendar, it looked like it was gonna work for most of them. So yeah, I think it'd be great to see some people in three dimension again. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it would be hard for me to make it over to every meeting. So I think having the hybrid option for for many of them is going to continue to be the way we do things. But I agree, getting together in person at least two or three times a year, uh, I think makes the committee more effective. Uh, you know, we get to know each other a little bit better. It's And it's easier to understand nuance in the room than on a screen. Amber, thoughts? Uh, I just want to pick up on what Cooper was saying. Um, I really appreciate the budget constraints. And so I do think that, I, I just want to throw this out there that, um, especially when we have conversations about outcomes, it will be really helpful to understand the budget constraints because you know, I don't want to make any kind of recommendation that that then has an impact on budget on the existing budget constraints. So the two conversations go go hand in hand. And then the other thing is, I also feel like um, we probably need that inform. We need so we'll need someone in this room, like on other conversations, that can speak to the budget constraints, probably on a more ongoing basis so that we're mindful of budget constraints as we put forth recommendations or concepts. Yeah, it so almost sounds like that might be another topic to add to the list to a better, a deeper dive into kind of the mechanics of, of our fiscal reality, which Mac described, which is on the operations side where we got a lot of problems and on the 
on the kind of infrastructure construction side, we've got more opportunities because the federal government and the state government like to fund projects. They don't like to fund operations. And the more projects we get, the more operations we need to, to deliver those and we have less money to do it. And so it creates this kind of no win situation. Um, and, you know, and we hear from all of our local partners around the state, how critical maintenance operations are to the local community. I mean, plowing the roads in the winter, um, maintaining the roads so they're passable for, you know, vehicles and freight and, and the economic driver of the state. And so it's, it is a conundrum that the local folks understand, but a lot of the federal legislators and state legislators like to fund projects. So it is, it is a bigger conversation. So we can add that to the list. Um, and, and I think this should be an ongoing topic to add to our um, inquiries. It, you know, if there's an area that we're all interested in, we can put it on the list and, and get to it. So today I think is a good brainstorming session. We'll take the information and probably make some tweaks to the agenda going forward or the calendar going forward. And feel free to make any suggestions in the interim, you know, for our next meeting if you have. Um, real quick on new members, how do you how do you want people recommended uh, and to whom? Um, I would say uh, you could just send me an email of you know some ideas and and um, I'm going to be asking you know I don't have a lot of contacts in the valley so to the extent that you folks know people that are you know maybe down south in the valley um, that would be helpful too. And then we'll I think I'll sit down with Carolyn and, and the team and, and figure out who might be a good fit and then start inviting. Anything else? We we scheduled this for an hour, thinking that we could be done in an hour. It looks like we're pretty darn close. But I don't want to. I want to wish everyone a happy holiday. I have to jump to another call, but I'll see you all in 2023 and hopefully my family will be healthy by then. Yes, I hope so too, Shauna. Thank you for all your work this year. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you so much, everyone. Any, um, any other thoughts, ideas, holiday, holiday gift suggestions? <laughs> Right. Need a personalized well, shopper. Uh, <laughs> hey Ted, it's getting a little late. If they're going to order from Amazon, you better hurry up. <laughs> You're kidding. We got weeks before Christmas. You start this <laughs> early. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, a shout out to my dad who uh, is no longer with us. He would wait till the last minute. He was a professor at the University of Oregon, and many times my gift Christmas morning was from the duck store in a brown paper bag, which I loved, <laughs> but uh, he was not, he was not one to like start early, so. I understand I, your dad completely. Yeah. <laughs> Could I add a good of the order item? Well, first of all, Cooper, I can't believe you're actually leaving, um, but okay, I'm starting to have acceptance. I've been in denial for a while, <laughs> but I, as Carolyn and Sharon are next to each other on my Zoom, do you all notice that they're doppelgangers of each other? You two look <laughs> so much alike. So I need to see you in three dimension now that I can size you up better and make sure that you're not the same person. <laughs> no, I think she's probably a lot younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everyone. It's been a really good year, I think. Um, yeah, I appreciate all the different perspectives people bring, and it, I think it's really helpful. I, I've learned a lot from you all, and I think the agency is is learning and growing, and wish you all a happy holiday. Thank, Thank you. you. Goodbye, Bye. Cooper. Great job.